Today on In the Woodyard, we're on a road trip. We're going to visit Tony from Tony's Cool Tools. We got Adam, we got Bert. We're going down the road and we're going to go play with some of Tony's toys. Now it's going to be a good day today, I think. We should have some fun. We're almost there. Tony lives out in the middle of nowhere, so it's kind of like trying to find a needle in a haystack here. I've been here before, but this is your first time, right? My first time. So, what the heck, there's a guy walking on the road. Watch out so you don't hit him. Look at this, we got a hitchhiker here. That's kind of interesting. Look at this guy. Little of nowhere and he's hitchhiking. Don't hit him. What the heck? What the heck? Well, how did you get here? I'm just looking for some cool tools. Well, hop in, we'll give you a ride. Awesome. <laughs> Look at who we found. So we got Mike. From KNL Firewood. You've been walking for how long now? Three days. Three days from okay. Indiana? You've been hitchhiking? Yes. Nobody picked you up? No. Nobody picked you up? We're 100 yards from Tony's place. You oh, finally oh get picked God, up. I almost made it. <laughs> I'm freezing. <laughs> oh, so right up here is Tony's. You can see he's he's got his uh, little shack out here. Used to be a outhouse and he puts firewood in it that he wants people to buy from him. He's got wood everywhere. Private property, that means he's got his guns loaded probably. Look at that tree's down. That one's down. Yeah. That's probably the one he wants us to cut up. Could be, could be. He's got wood. And he's got logs. That's been sitting there while John brought those. That's been there at least a year. He's got to get busy here, man. So here we are in Tony's man shed, garage, man cave. man cave, with all of his stuff. Now you guys don't see what we see. He's got everything, every tool ever made, he has. He's got it all, which is awesome. So we're here, um, Bert and Adam and I made the trip and we picked up this guy on the side of the road. <laughs> Mike was hitchhiking yeah. on his way here. Now we knew he was coming, so we picked him up and brought him to Tony's. And, We've got a couple video ideas we're going to do today, but the first thing we're going to talk about is the channels. First one we're going to talk about is Bert's new channel, because guys have been asking, does Bert have a channel? Yes, Bert has a channel. The name of your channel is? Bert's Custom Cuts. And so he's going to be doing lots of stuff that I can't do, because he does some different things, but he'll also do some behind-the-scenes stuff, just some extra footage. So check him out. Um, go sub to him and uh, give him some eyeballs. And then Mike's channel, you guys, yeah, you look at his head. <laughs> um, what, what letters are they? K, oh, the letters K N L. L. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. He has a channel, and uh, some of you have seen him on my channel before. He is from Indiana, and uh, he does a firewood business too. And we're going to talk about that. And, and then don't I, hold it against him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then, of course, Tony has a channel. Some of you know about Tony's channel, but I have a lot of new subscribers that don't know. This is Tony, and he has a channel. It's called Tony's Cool Tools. He does reviews of really nice equipment and uh, shows you how to use things, things for firewood or just tractor, tractor stuff and firewood. things like that. So yeah, he's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, so check out their channels. That's the first item of business. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is the firewood business because we're all involved in it to a degree. Um, I started selling firewood like 10 years ago, been involved with it my whole life. And my whole goal when I first started was just to get exercise. And I ended up with more wood than I could use. And my wife says, what are you going to do with all that wood? I said, well, maybe I'll sell some. And I thought, you know, man, if I could, if I could do firewood for just a couple hours a day, it would be great exercise. Well, you know, like they say, be careful what you wish for. And you were so, hand splitting it at that time. I was doing it, yeah, I just wanted to get exercise. And now it's turned into a beast, and now it's just grown way more than I ever thought it would, and, which has been great. Um, so I'm getting close to the level where i got to make a decision. Do I just stay this size, or do I grow it and, you know, sell more wood and do more advertising, hire employees, all that stuff? So I'm kind of towards the end of where a lot of people want to be or they think they want to be, but believe me, there's a lot of work involved. And then on the other end, Tony sells firewood in two different stands he has, bundle wood. Right. And you really don't want to do much more than you are. It's not that I don't want to. My property doesn't allow me to have that type of wood right. product. So. I'm just doing stands and then for my outdoor wood boiler. Right, and because you burn wood, you don't want to sell all your wood exactly. that you're heating your house yeah. with. And you're at the point in your life, too, you don't need another job. No. 
So you're doing what you like to do and having fun and saying no more often. That's exactly it. And then, Mike, you do kind of a hybrid. You do bundles and... Right. And and we burn at home, too. We've got an outdoor right, right. boiler like Tony does. So we make wood for ourselves. Uh, we sell bundles. We sell bulk wood. We've got a roadside stand. Um, so we do a little bit of everything. We've started delivering. I know the first time you and I talked, I was dead set against delivering, but now I've got a dump trailer and I'm delivering wood. So it is, like you say, it's kind of a um, kind of a beast and it just kind of snowballs and grows. And uh, you got to learn when to say no. And yeah. you can be okay with not growing the business. You can. You've got enough. You want to yeah. keep it fun? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We, and we talked about this earlier. When, yeah. when it stops becoming fun, then you need to pump the brakes a little bit and, and reevaluate, right. at least and, for me. And I get told all the time on my channel, oh, you should do this. You should start advertising here. You should hire employees. You should buy more skid steers. You should, you should, you should. I, I, I'm happy with where I am. Yeah. And at my age in my life, I don't really want to work much harder than I am because you guys... It's fun. Yeah. It's fun it's for you fun. guys. And yeah. so for like Adam, for instance, he doesn't burn wood. He doesn't sell wood, but he has more chainsaws than I do. <laughs> because you just enjoy it. Right. I just, yeah, it's exercise for me, but it's get to play with different tools. Yeah. And you come and go as you please, yep. which is good for you. Because yep. you got a life and you like to hunt and do other stuff. So, and, and Bert, we met because of my channel. Yep. And uh, he had the facility that really would have been ideal. And at the time, I wasn't planning on moving, but then just the way things worked out with my neighbor not liking my situation with what the covenants allowed and zoning and all that basically wanted me out of there and had a bigger wallet than me. So talked to Bert, and Bert says, heck yeah, we could use machinery here. He heats with wood. Yeah. He'd get wood for free. He gets all the equipment to use whenever he wants, so it worked good for everybody. So it's, it's been a good situation for me, but there's a lot of people that ask me, and I'll probably ask you guys too, you know, how much wood can you sell? How much wood do you want to sell? Can you do more? I, I, yes. I, I, I'm in the growing stages of our business. I want to continue to grow. How much can you sell? You can sell as much as you can produce. I, I'm, I'm confident. Right. I don't know that there's a number yet yeah, that more I wouldn't is, sell out of. More is the number. Yeah, it really is. And it just depends on how much you want to do, adjusting your prices, doing delivery, expanding your advertising, picking yeah. up clients, going yeah. out and asking for, like Ohio Joe does. He basically goes to restaurants, and now that he's got enough of them, there's probably more coming to him. And, that's the cash cows because that's sure. cash flow. That's cash yeah. flow. At restaurants, campgrounds, yep. um, people that heat with wood, people that just do it for fun. These solo stoves are taking off like crazy. Right. Everybody, you know, people are now be, are able to burn kind of like throughout the winter that like enjoy fires typically like in the fall. Now they can just burn whenever they want. The, the, the fireplace is on their porch. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's movable. Even when it's burning, that's you it. found they're yeah. so cool, you can pick you them can and move them. them. Yeah. yeah. So I... There's a lot of things that we haven't tapped into yet, and I'm sure you haven't either. Right, yeah. Now you're Customer scratching. base. So tell, tell everybody your story about the campground, because that's a good story. <laughs> okay. About so, careful what you wish for. Right, yeah. So when we first started selling firewood, um, I bought a twister wrapper because... For doing I, bundles. For doing bundles, right. Uh, because I had a campground just call me out of the blue and say, hey, we need about 500 bundles. I thought, eh, I can maybe do that. I'll do that for you. Well, a couple months later, I'd end up selling them 1,400 bundles, and I was pretty much out of wood. And they ended up going and getting their wood somewhere else, and I've kind of lost that account, I'll say. But it, it's a blessing in disguise because I, I was telling you guys, you know, work all day long, come home, make 50 or 80 bundles, go to bed, do it all over again the next day. You're burning your candle at both ends, mm -hmm. and you got to deliver them. And, you know, every week they were wanting another 200, and it was just, you just be careful which, which contracts maybe you sign. I didn't sign a contract or anything, but uh, they'll bury you. They really will if you yeah. get, get in bed with the wrong, I wouldn't say the wrong person, but, the, but maybe the right business that they'll... If I kept that thing, if I kept that business, that's all I'd be doing right now. Yeah. There's right. bundles. Yeah. Right. And the fun yeah. would be gone. The fun would be gone. Yeah. And your kids would hate you because you'd make them do it. <laughs> well, they were doing it. Right. The wife was doing yeah. it. Right. His in-laws. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It. yeah. yeah. My right. wife. Because you start depending on the people closest to you and all of a sudden. They don't want to. They, yeah. Want, yeah. They're not having fun. Yeah. I'm the one having fun. And I have to recruit all these people. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was no good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting business. And. 
I, I, a lot of people ask me in comments all the time, you know, well, how do I get started? Well, number one, start cutting wood right now. Yeah. Customers mm-hmm. first. Well, you got to, well, you got to get customers before you buy equipment, but buy your basic equipment, just start cutting wood because it's not something you can turn around today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's if, if you're going to sell a decent product, it's going to take you six months to a year to where you can start turning inventory and you just got to get going on it and you'll figure it out as you go. You'll realize you need more or you realize you don't want to do as much. Yeah. Whatever the case is, yeah, yeah. you'll figure it out as you go. But start, start getting your inventory built up. Don't go take out a $100,000 loan to buy a bunch of equipment because that's how guys lose their butts. Yeah. And they don't realize that running a business is always better to do it bootstrap, ground up, grow your inventory, grow your customer base, then start buying better equipment, selling your old stuff, getting new stuff and growing. And that's is my advice. You've got a pretty good model for that, I think. Yeah. Well, I just see, I've seen other guys that I've talked to, guys that don't watch the channel, guys that um, most of them have been loggers that I've talked to. They're like, yeah, I tried that firewood thing. I went and I bought a processor and I bought a dump trailer and I bought a dump truck. And, you know, they're going to spend, a, they're literally were spending a couple hundred thousand dollars right from the get-go. Yeah. Because they figured, well, I'm a logger. I've got access to logs. i got to get equipment because mm-hmm. that's how they do logging, big equipment. Well, they didn't realize they had no customers. Most loggers, their customers are contracts that they have with paper companies or lumber mills or pallet mills. And so they've got a base that they're selling to right away. Firewood's not like that. Mm-hmm. So it takes a while to get to where you're going. Unless someone comes to you and says, I'm going to buy like that campground. Say you get a guy that owns three, four campgrounds, and he's, he's going to tell you right from the get-go, we go through 1,000 bundles a month. Well, yeah, then maybe you buy some equipment. Yeah. Because you've got a customer that you can deal with right away, but that's not normal. And people don't realize growing a business doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. It takes a long time to grow a business. And like you, you don't want it to be no. something you're married to, no. a slave to, well, really. One of the things that you taught us all at the beginning is Buying uh, bulk product and buying logs versus mm-hmm. getting tree service wood. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's great to get tree service wood, but you don't have anything. You get junk a lot of times. Whereas if you buy a load at $1,400, yeah, it's $1,400 out of your pocket, but you are processing it immediately. And in a lot of cases, you get a better product because you're uniform in what you're doing, like when you were cutting manually by hand and doing it, as opposed to a processor. Yeah, but you're, you're saving so much time. Because mm-hmm. I was running and getting exactly. wood from my buddy's land, which was an hour, hour and a half away, my brother's land, uh, other people. And the time I put into it and the effort you put into it, yes, I was making money, but I figured it out. I've, I've calculated it so many times. When I go an hour away, which was normal for me, to cut wood, load it into the trailer, haul it back, unload it, split it, stack it, deliver Fuel it. Cost. I was around twenty-five to thirty dollars an hour, which for a part-time job, I guess for a lot of people that's good. And I liked it because it was extra money and I was getting exercise. But when I switched to where I was buying logs, and I was spending the fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars and getting twelve four co- full cords, cutting it all up in a couple days and then splitting a couple days, my time was reduced by probably one third to one quarter of what I used to spend. So my dollars per hour almost doubled. Oh, it was wow. like 45 bucks an hour. Yeah. And I figured it out a lot of different ways. So what you're basically doing, I think, is you're buying someone else's services that they're really good at. They have the big equipment. They have the harvesters. They have the log haulers. They're buying the stumpage. And then they're making money on the trucking it to you. So you're in all the wear and tear in your machinery that when you have to go get it, you're, you're actually way ahead buying the logs. Mm-hmm. It's regional, though, because I can't no, do that. Can't right. I can't do it. Right. That's yeah. true. That's I'm, true. I'm central Indiana, and there's just, no it's logs. just not out there. Yeah. Yeah, they'll go in, they'll take, um, they'll go into a woods, and they'll get out the saw logs, but they'll just run over everything else and just leave it lay. Because they want lumber. Yeah, yeah. They just want the because lumber. Because there's no paper industry. Yep. And there's probably not, there's probably not mulch companies, I would think. There might be some of that. Uh, maybe, but not apparently not at the volume where it's it's worth it to the loggers to take everything out of the mm-hmm. out of the woods. Well, you're more of, you're more of a uh, Indiana. Yes, there's woods, but there's more farms than woods. Yeah, for sure, for and sure. Where us, our yeah. southern part of Wisconsin is more farms, 
northern yeah. parts definitely forest. Yes, yeah. for sure. So, and there's even a central forest area, so it's just yeah. different. Well, when people ask me about buying logs, why it's better, I explain it this way. People that make, um, say, like bread or pastries or say they sell donuts, they're not growing wheat out in the field and harvesting it and grinding it. They buy the flour. They're paying someone else for their mm -hmm. basic materials. Mm -hmm. That's really how you got to look at it. Yeah. yeah. True of anything else. I mean, most industries will buy the raw materials or processed materials ready to make their product. Like people like, say, Fiskars used to work for. I'm guessing they don't own, own a plastics making company. No. They buy their plastics or whatever they do for their handles, mm -hmm. and then they make it into the product. Division of labor. Yeah, you separate it because you become proficient at what you do, so you're making more money. So plastic people do plastics, metal people do metal, and right. so forth and so on. So firewood guys do firewood. They don't go out and cut the trees down. Well, well, well they, can. they can. But not at the volume. Right, at volume. Maybe the... What um, you're doing, unless um, you're logging. Unless you are a guy like Frank's up in Peshtigal, Wisconsin. Right. He's got like 60 employees. The firewood's their smallest part of their business, and they sell three to five semi loads a week. But he's That's a logger. The, he's a logger. In, and yeah, they yeah. do truck repair, and they yeah, do other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do landscaping. I mean, they do all kinds of stuff. So it's totally different. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really no different than any other industry. You've got to kind of know where the sweet spot is. And then maybe when you get to a certain size, you say, it's time to take the next step. Where are you right now as far as face cords? What do you think you're going to sell? Well, what would you sell this in 23? Year, last year was better than this year. I mean, when I say this year, I mean this past selling season. Um, the year before this, it was right around 200 full cords, so 600 okay. face cords. This year, I would guess 150-ish. I don't know. Has that grown since you were at the studio? Has what? Grown? Your volume? Has it oh, grown? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it grew a lot. Yeah, I just kept doing more and more. And I got to where it's all I could do, and I was selling out. But then when I buy, started buying truckloads, the big game changer was getting the processor because yeah. we could produce wood so fast. And then the next big game changer was when we moved to Burt's Farm. I guess because that's what I was asking. They were there, and I had a team of guys just help. I had help, yeah. You had a lot of slave labor. Well, <laughs> I feed them. I, you just got to oh, feed them. Okay. Um, but yeah. It's half a stick of bubble gum. <laughs> no, or no. the creek water? No. <laughs> no creek water. Um, the water comes out of the tap on the farm. Uh, oh, yeah, that's good cold water. Well, the frustrating part, though, is like here in central Wisconsin, if you're in a, like you said, if you're in a wooded area, mm -hmm. kiss it goodbye. Everyone's got wood. So yep. your pricing on wood goes way down. Right. And the people needing wood is very minimal. Whereas you, in a rural area, or in a populated metropolitan right. area, right. yes, you have a lot of competition, yeah. but there's a lot more people buying it. Right. That's the, that's people, the thing. People, most people, and again, this happens all the time on the channel, people ask questions. You've probably heard the same thing. You know, how can you charge that much? And then I get also a lot of people saying, you're giving your wood away. So where you are determines everything. And exactly. people don't understand supply and demand. Very few people get it. And supply and demand basically comes down to the way I explained it in the, in the firewood industry is that if you live in an area with lots of trees and very few people, the wood's going to be cheap. If you live in an area with lots of people like Chicago, no trees, wood's going to be expensive. And the high end of wood that I know, if you go by full cords, Chicago, Denver, Washington, D.C., uh, Los Angeles, I've talked to people and people have messaged me and I've talked to people at different conventions. It's on the low end, $600 for a full right. cord, eight to 900 for a full cord because there's lots of people in no woods. You go northern Wisconsin where my brother lives, it's, it's $150 to $200 for a full cord. Lots of trees, no people. Yeah. And everybody has a chainsaw. That's it. <laughs> right. So, and the other thing a lot of people don't get, for those of you that are people maybe watching for the first time, or if you heat with wood, people that heat with wood, they want two things. They want really good wood, and they want it cheap. That's right. You know? <laughs> because they're trying to save money. Yeah. The people I sell to, and probably a lot of your customers, yeah. they want really good wood, and they'll pay for it. They don't care because they're literally burning money to sit and watch TV or ambiance. Ambiance. Uh, it's for comfort and for enjoyment to drink beer. And I've found too that, um, and I'm sure you've run into this. I haven't so much yet, but they want someone that's reliable year after year after year. Right. So if maybe they can buy it, 
the same quality for, we'll say, 70 bucks a face cord, but you're a hundred dollars a face cord. They'll buy it from you because that 70 guy, $70 guy doesn't have it every year. Or, or he run produces out. crap. Or he produces crap. It's you know, green knows, wood or dirty wood. They know they can call you anytime, all the time, and yep. you're going to have it. That's worth it to well, them. Your delivery yep. within 24 hours like you do. Yeah, I try to deliver as fast as I can. That's the other thing. People know, and it's kind of a double-edged sword, that <laughs> yes, I can be there in 24 hours or even the same day a lot of times, but then you get people that are like, oh, we're down to our last stick. Call Chris. Tell him to bring wood today. <laughs> so I got to have that to deal with. <laughs> but... I, that's okay if I'm available. I try to get it to them right away. So yeah. let's talk about a little bit about the bundles. Okay. What what's been your experience as far as in your market? How you can price it? And what kind of quantities? And how your stands work versus the pricing difference from your campground that you had? Okay. Talk about that a little. Yeah. Bit. So um, honestly, the pricing really doesn't change much as far as bulk sales go. So um, I don't have the campground anymore, but I do have. Uh, a grocery store, an RV um, camper business, um, a, like a Quick Mart. Mm -hmm. and, well, I guess two of those, two, two Quick Marts. Stop there for a second. Yeah. Tell me about this RV thing. How does that work? So he, I live in a real small town, like a thousand people, and this RV business was in that small town, and I was selling bundles at the grocery store. Well, the guy who owns the RV business bought a bundle at the grocery store oh. one time and then called me. He's like, hey, I've got this RV business. And they sell everything. They sell the RVs. They sell everything that goes in an RV. I don't camp, but maybe you guys do. I'm sure yep. some of you out here do. I mean, you, you go to the, it's like camper world, I guess. You go yep. there and you can buy anything. Right. Well, he's like, I have this business. I want to sell firewood. So, and I want your wood. So obviously I, I started selling him some and we've got a rack at his place and he sells it to people that come in to get buy whatever. Yeah. I thought maybe you worked a deal where like when they buy a, a camper, they get like no. five, five bundles. bundles or something. No, like, he sure. might work that out with them, See, but that's, I that's don't know. That's maybe you su su suggest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but maybe. then again, how much do you want to sell? Yeah. Now, Bert's example is kind of the opposite. Tell about when you go camping. What do you do? <laughs> I, I load a whole tote in the back of the truck and go camping. Like and then you sell it at the yeah. campground. You right? could. I, I could if I wanted to, but usually we burn it all because I have fire something going. to drink while I'm you know, watching, mm -hmm. drinking whiskey and having a good time camping. So. Yeah. yeah. So in Indiana, you have to be certified through the DNR to take wood in. Let me back this up. Most state it, campgrounds yeah, are like yeah. that. Okay, too, so yeah. I don't know about that. Well, All right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I, we are certified as a firewood supplier. People can buy our wood and take it into an Indiana campground. So how did you get certified? What, what did you have to do? Just uh, say, I, I, I have good wood? Pretty much. You call them up and say, hey, I, want, I would like to be certified. Then they come out and audit you once oh, a okay. year um, just to make sure you're, you're following their policies. They just don't want, they don't want you to... Um, have wet wood so the bugs travel or, from here. Or to there. the right measurements so you're marking it properly. Yeah, well, right. So. Yeah. Right. Oh, so, cool. anyway, it's, it's pretty easy. They just come out and, and audit you and give you the stamp of approval or they tell you to fix this and that and right. you do it. And, so, the grocery store, is yeah. it sold outside the store or in the store? Nope, outside the store, but they've kind of got an awning that sits under so it stays dry. Because I've seen a couple of places I've stopped in where they have it in the store and it's, I, I, I think by law, it has to be kiln drying. So, oh, so the bugs are out of it. Maybe I, I would I would think so, especially yeah. in a grocery store. Yeah, but there might be some small. I know I have a my good friend Jeremy out in New Mexico. He sells to a grocery store and they put it right in the store. Wow. But it's a little bitty, like hundred person town, and okay. they just put it on the shelf. Yeah, they put whatever out there. So right. I, I, it depends where you are. But if you're in a big city, you're probably going to get inspected a lot more. You're probably, yeah, <laughs> probably. it's going to be and get more complaints, uh, if more so. rules, yeah, uh, yeah. less freedom. Yeah. That's just my I opinion. would suggest, too, if you guys are thinking about starting a, a bundle business and you're approaching businesses to sell your bundles, I would say go to 24-hour uh, stores. What I don't like to do is sell to a business that closes at 10 o'clock at night, and then you know some of them might walk away at, at, right. cl during closing hours, and then the boss is going to be like, ah, sorry, I'm not going to buy from you anymore. Too many of them are getting stolen. Well, it's yeah. not my fault, but if you had a 24-hour store, at least somebody's there kind of eye eyeballing good point. it. Good, good, good point. Good point. Well, I see a lot of the... People that I know, especially Wisconsin, where there's gas stations, northern Wisconsin specifically, a lot of the places that sell, they deliver in pallets. Right. They just mm. set the pallet down. And, and put netting around it. Yeah. And it's out by the pumps or it's up by the building, and they just do pallets. Yeah. Um, that's, I, I've got a couple guys I've talked to that, that do that, and I'm planning on doing videos 
interviewing them pretty soon too, where they because they have legit full time. Uh, one of them, for instance, is Arts Forest Products. He's out of uh, Anago. He stopped in at the Whittier a couple times. He has like twenty some employees. They have their own logging equipment now, and all they sell is bundles. That's it. That's, That's it. their whole business with twenty employees, and they do. He told me the number. It was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cords of wood in bundle form. Yeah. When, so when like, I lost wow. this, that account, that big campground account, um, I had heard that they ended up buying bundles from someplace in North Carolina. Does the same thing. Semi loads of yeah. just bundles. Right. So that business is out there if you want to go get it. <laughs> yeah. And the thing I think with fire, the reason why you say the business is out there if you want to get it, it's a lot of work. Oh. Yeah. And it's a bulk material. It's not like you're selling diamonds where you can carry it in your pocket <laughs> and make a year's salary by selling a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Firewood ain't like that. <laughs> Firewood and, is work. And I've found, too, that the more you do, the, the, the more good product you make, the more waste you have, too. That's right. And that's, yeah. you've got to have, you've got to think about that because you've got to have a place to either burn it or put it or something. Well, well, that's, that's not key. Oh, right that's, there is that's, the place to have it, it's, especially. Yep. That's going to stop your business really quickly it, it will you can split it you could get the fastest splitter and you can stack it all up and everything else but then where do you go from there if you don't have room or like for me i have a lot of trees i'm in a forested area i don't get sun i don't i get some wind but it takes you, longer you to have drive. wind i pass with <laughs> oh, I'm like, like chris was like chris. <laughs> I don't need to know that. I need to turn the fan on. So that's another benefit I had of moving to the farm with Bert because all of our waste either gets burned or they've got some areas. They, we just take it out and dump it in there. And some of the sawdust oh. we're just spreading on the field. So there's a lot of places they to go over. go back and watch the tree job video, they'll actually that's kind of where that waste was dumped was down in that corner because it's yep. low and we haven't planted that corner of that field for I don't know, years. I yeah. think I was probably Gavin's age then and we still didn't plant that corner then because... Never grew because it's always wet. Soupy in there, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you got to plan for your your waste, your shrinkage, all that kind of stuff. Um, like for guys that are maybe in a residential area, what can you get away with? Because mm -hmm. there's that. Yeah. How good do you know your neighbors and are your friends? <laughs> there's so much to consider. <laughs> um, and then again, your stand. If you got a stand, you legally might not be able to have a stand on your road because, say, you got a double yellow line in front of your house. You can't be stopping traffic in front of your house. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. And you got one stand by your daughter's house. Mm -hmm. It's a very busy road, but that's kind of an issue that people have to pull in. They actually pull in, but they right. made it so that they cut an area out so Big that enough. they could pull out right. and do a three-point turn in there and then get out. Are they pulling into their driveway? Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, they're not staying on the road. They're actually pulling in. Gotcha. Um, so that's an issue where you are. Um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about having a stand on, at Burt's Farm for his boys to run, and it's a really busy road, and do we really want to have people stopping? Do we really want to cause traffic accidents? I mean... The true question uh, we know the answer to is my wife doesn't want people... Right, yeah, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, that, oh, absolutely. We'd, we'd have to set it down yeah. somewhere or somewhere we'd else. Farther, but we'd have to get the approval to put another driveway. Right, there's all kinds of stuff. You got. There's. It's not like you can just do stuff, because when you do stuff, a lot of times... Somebody with a badge knocks on the door and says, um, we need to talk. <laughs> you don't um, want that conversation. <laughs> you don't want that. But then again, there's always that. It's easier to ask for forgiveness. And, um, unfortunately. But sometimes the, the uh, argument of I don't know doesn't work. You know? And you and I, we're going to be doing a video here on insurance regulations because that's oh, one thing that yeah. most people don't even consider. Just like you were saying, if you're cutting if your stand is close to the road and you pull on the shoulder, if someone hits you, who's responsible? And we have an insurance agent that's had his own business for over 30 years going to be telling us some of the do's and don'ts or something you should be aware of. Because making $4 or $5 a, on a bundle and having to pay a lawyer's fee because of litigation or just people getting hurt. You exactly. don't want that. You don't want that. Slipping uh, by your stand. Dropping a bundle on your stand. Here's one other thing. Some people use the handles. They staple handles onto the bundle. Value add. I think it's a great looking item and everything. I stopped doing it just because of liability. Someone picks that handle up and the staple didn't hold 
and it drops and hits their foot, breaks their toe or whatever, you could be liable for Another that. case of lawyers ruining the world. Exactly. <laughs> Good thing that uh, your thumb is feeling better. Yeah, yeah. it's getting there. <laughs> so anyway, yes. there you go. I think we've... Uh, we covered a whole bunch of stuff. I think that's enough for today. So thanks for watching, folks. Check out Tony's channel, Tony's Cool Tools. Check out Bert's channel, Bert's, Bert's Custom Tools. Cuts. Check out Mike's channel, KNL Firewood. There you go. Adam, he just likes stuff. Yep. <laughs> so that's it for today, folks. Hit the buttons. We'll be back tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. Another review for you. Right now, go watch all the videos on my channel. And mine. And, and mine. his. And mine. Good night, Irene. <laughs> Good night, Irene. <laughs>